the last place I wanted to be was Frost Nippistan. This one's wife. Oh, God. No. My ears. She returns to podcasting. When you hear the ear attack warning, you and your family must stop listening and take cover. Take your government-issued anti-word salad pills. Avoid anything beige. Do not return to your device until the all clear has been signalled. This is for your protection and safety. Hello, I'm HG Tudor. Yes, bad news indeed. Or is it? For it will provide me, and doubtless other commentators, with an opportunity to not only scrutinise her narcissism in action, but have a jolly good laugh at the bollocks that she's going to produce. As a consequence of the news that this one's wife has secured a new podcasting deal. Yes, Kieran Southern writes in The Times, this one's wife signs podcast deal with Lemonada Media. Hmm, yes, that well-known media outlet. The Duchess of Sussex will return to podcasting after signing a deal to develop a new series with an American audio company, it has been announced. This one's wife said that she is proud to be working with Lemonada Media, a female-founded company, which of course is going to suit the faux feminist, because after all, she hates other women and has only got to where she has as a consequence of ensnaring stupid men and bonking them. This is a female-founded company that releases podcasts from performers including Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Sarah Silverman. The Duchess revealed that her dynamic, which of course is not really a word that you would apply to her because she's lazy, her dynamic new podcast is well in the works, mm, but financial terms were not disclosed. Her previous podcast series, Archetypes, which featured interviews with high-profile figures including Mariah Carey and Serena Williams, was originally released on Spotify, but will soon be made available on Lemonada. Clearly, Spotify think to itself, there's no point us keeping it because it's abject nonsense. It's shite. We're quite pleased to get rid of it. After all, she is a fucking grifter. I'm proud to now be able to share that I'm joining the brilliant team at Lemonada to continue my love of talking about myself, I beg your pardon, to continue my love of podcasting, this one's wife said. You clearly don't love it. You're lazy. You made one series. And most of that was done by other people, other people conducting the interviews, and then you just came along and had your questions edited in. You don't love podcasting. What you actually love is the opportunity to talk about yourself, because that's your favourite subject. The ability to control people through it, or at least attempt to do so. The fuel that you receive by way of the reactions. And, of course, the money that's associated with this, because that's what matters. You delude yourself into thinking that you have a message to issue to people. You haven't. Being able to support a female-founded company with a roster of thought-provoking and highly entertaining podcasts is a fantastic way to kick off 2024. She said that she is eager to share her new podcast soon and is overjoyed to be joining the Lemonada family. Jessica Cordova Kramer, who co-founded Lemonada in 2019, said, Oh, fuck, what have I done? No. Said, that the company was honoured that it could help democratise access to archetypes. What? No wonder you've signed her up because you spout shite as well. 
help democratize access to archetypes. Yes, it was very, very difficult to listen to archetypes when it was on Spotify. Nobody could get there, could they? As I understand it, it was free on Spotify. I don't think you can get more democratized than that by providing something for free so that everybody can listen to it. Whereas I understand that you're going to have to pay to listen to the nonsense that she's going to spout. So actually, you're making it less accessible, thank God, to people than it was at Spotify. And democratise access. I mean, what does that actually mean? What, we, we vote for access? And if most people vote for access, everybody gets it? Or if they don't, nobody gets it? These stupid phrases. Kramer said, This one's wife's talent went missing a long time ago. In fact, she's never had any, no. This one's wife's talent as host, creator, and conversationalist is unparalleled. Are you fucking mad, woman? If you mean it's unparalleled in the levels of nonsense and general ass wipiness that she engages in, then you may be correct. But if you're actually praising her, you must be on some kind of psychedelic if you think that she is talented, that she's a good creator, and that as a conversationalist, she's unparalleled. The woman is boring, talent-free, a charisma absent zone. All she will do is talk about herself and settle scores. But she goes on to say, we are thrilled to co-create a new series with her that fosters her approach to creating art that matters. Well, I suppose you're not going to say, yeah, we've signed up this one's wife, and to be honest, I think I was pissed one night when I did it, and actually I'm now looking at it and thinking, what the fuck have I done, because she's generally useless. She's got nothing meaningful to say. She talks in word salad, fridge magnet platitudes. Not many people actually like her. Jesus Christ, what have I done? You're going to have to talk it up, aren't you? Stephanie Wittelswax, what a great name. Or, if a German was saying it, Stephanie Wittelswax, the other co-founder of Lemonada, said that the company felt immediate kinship with this one's wife, what, in the bankruptcy court, and her Archwell Productions team. She added, As we've started development with the Duchess of Sussex, we are blown away by her collaborative spirit and clear vision, along with her deep desire to build compassion and community through this work. Oh, fuck's sake. You don't build compassion. You are compassionate. And there is not a compassionate bone in her body because she is a narcissist. You don't build compassion. You are compassionate towards people. Her collaborative spirit, which is, you do what I tell you to do, clear vision, let's talk about me, and her facade of building compassion and community as she spouts shite about this. You can tell what's going to happen here. You get all the announcements about what she's going to do, and then it's, um, this one's wife, we actually need you to do some work. Oh, I actually have to do something, do I? I thought just the fact that it's my name meant that you're going to pay me a lot of money, and then everybody else will do the work. You see, because she's a narcissist, what appeals to her, subconsciously, is in the moment. So signing a deal in the moment gets her publicity. Look, she's signed a new deal, which will get lots of people talking, as I am now, and the way that people will have commented across social media and in the mainstream news about this. So it enables her to generate a reaction which provides her with fuel, and that's what she wants. Remember, as a narcissist, it's about catering to the prime aims in the most effective and efficient method possible which is invariably talk, but no walk. So that she will talk about, I'm going to do this podcast, there's works in the pipeline, etc. But actually, her narcissism is not really bothered about delivering. Some narcissists will deliver because they have a different mindset as to getting to the prime aims. She doesn't because she's lazy and she's entitled. The article continues by explaining that this one's wife... <clears throat> 
<clears throat> 42 and the Duke of Sussex 39 had signed a $20 million deal with Spotify in 2020 with the goal of creating uplifting audio projects. Archetypes debuted in August 2022 and promised to explore and subvert the labels that try to hold women back, aka, here are all the things that have been said about me in the past, I'm now going to take them down one by one. The series reached number one in the podcast charts of six countries. However, in June last year, the Sussex's Spotify deal was brought to a premature end after the couple produced just one podcast series for the company. Their reputation was damaged after Bill Simmons, a Spotify executive, called them grifters and lazy. The early termination of the deal also raised doubts about the couple's future in Hollywood and their reported $100 million deal with Netflix, which is due to run out next year. Thus, the world wakes up to news that she has a new podcast in the offing, having signed this new deal, which of course explains why, in part, the new website appeared, because she needs a new platform to be able to announce projects such as this. And indeed, she utilises that to that end. More about that in a separate video. This, of course, is a success for her in that she has signed up a new deal. And it enables her to find a platform by which she can seek to control people through what she says, draw fuel by way of their responses, and that she will look to make money from it, which, of course, is a residual benefit. It's not going to be the money spinner that she thinks it is and isn't going to be anywhere close to what she received from Spotify. More about that later. But the fact is, initially, this is a success for her vis-a-vis -vis the prime aims. Of course, there then comes the backwash as there will be plenty of ridicule and criticism for this. For example, let's just quickly dive below the line to see how the world has greeted this announcement. Robert Asher announces an unparalleled conversation list. Really, she spouts nonsense and nothing she has ever done empowers women. Jay Nesbitt, talented host and conversationalist, laughingly hysterical emoji. Richard Eaton, how many different ways can this couple display how little talent they have? It's very impressive. Giles Brooks, you've got to admire the way they get supposedly very intelligent people to part with huge amounts of money for doing effectively nothing. Xander Glasgow, I'd love to know where I can't get it. S. Muller, what a mistake they made. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, she certainly isn't. I am fascinated as to how blind some people are to reality. Rebecca Reedy, please. How has she ever demonstrated any compassion? I'll wait. G. Herbert, you've got to hand it to them. The Markles are the ultimate grifters. I haven't seen hanger-on behaviour this determined since the Sylvester Stallone movie Cliffhanger. J. Martin, what a strange world they live in. S.J.R. Warlow, who on earth pays good money to listen to anything this fool says? I don't get it. Alex Latter, I just want to puke. So, hardly the announcement in the Times readers of joy and anticipation as to what this one's wife is going to pump out for everybody to listen to. But the podcasters are coming and rest assured that your glorious narrator will be ready to dissect her narcissism as it will undoubtedly be delivered in full effect and of course to ensure that we ridicule the dross that she will spout. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.